So it started, but uh, I'm worried we have no compiler to do it. Is anyone working on the compiler? <laughs> that was one of the main purposes, actually. So, yeah, yeah, wait another two minutes. Well, Harry, tell us why you want to avoid free dress. <laughs> Yeah, so, don't you need help? Yeah, then it's a little bit. This one's working and uh, I don't have anything to show. It's fine. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, so, so back when I started uh, what working with the tool chain, I relatively quickly knew of the compiler having a way to tell to, to tell Gus to avoid the preprocessor by emitting well-formed code which does not need preprocessing and by by that means avoiding unnecessary work that the assembler would do. Yet at the same time, about no target in, uh, in the compiler actually got its right. I think there might be maybe one or two targets which actually know how to properly avoid the processor. And I mean, the, the, the purpose of the session really was to figure out if this is intentional, and if, uh, in that case, whether much or in all of this can be ripped out, uh, out of the assembler, and we always go through the preprocessing, or whether this was actually just because something didn't work and the compiler short of working on, yeah. on gas, the color compiler guys simply decided to turn it off and keep it off until better days. Now if there's no compiler here, yeah. <laughs> is, is it going to be hard to figure out? Do, do, do the compiler backends have to opt in to say, I don't need a seminar preprocessor? Because I, I yes. suspect the answer is the people who write the back ends don't know about the feature, so they haven't enabled it. They, they just think, I've just got to generate an assembler, I don't know that there's any special. Because the compiler has target groups which every back end fills in it, but which then aren't used correctly in certain places. So most targets provide us hooks, yet despite fail to disable the preprocessor. So, yes, in principle, target maintainers are aware of the loop because it's properly documented and everything. It's uh, just, uh, or, or it's actually a set of three loops, I think, uh, which targets are expected to implement. But uh, there is actually a mixture of two problems here. Mm -hmm. uh, one problem is, uh, the, the, the turning off can be happening in two ways. There is a command line option, by itself, no, not here on, on, on the abstract, and there is a directive, uh, uh, which is hash no other. Yeah. This hash no other needs to be the very first thing in the file, yes. and it often isn't. <laughs> uh, or oh, there is not none yeah. at all. Yet then the compiler, Consistently for inline assembly, it mm needs -hmm. directives to turn back on the preprocessor for inline assembly. Yes. Well, which is why the targets have to yeah. support it all in order to be able to turn it back on. Right. Despite it not being turned off. 
Um, I, 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 what I suspect has happened is that the, when the back ends were created, they were just copied from a previously existing back end. Quite, and quite and well. Because, yes. because it works, whether you do or don't enable the assembly of regressive view, they didn't have to fix anything, so they didn't have to investigate what those target hooks really do. Quite possible. And so yes. that's why the situation is now. The, the thing is, my regulation over 30 years is, of course, pretty poor. Uh, the thing is that from the days when I started working on it, I think to re that I remember that it was working on more targets than it does today. So it must have been, in, in that remembering of mine, it must have been disabled in certain targets, in certain situations, whatever. And the explanation for that would, of course, have been interesting in order to figure out what on the assembler side we need to do for the compiler to be in the position to reinforce that acceleration. The acceleration, by the way, is not very significant yes. in, uh, in my measurements. I made it x and six work so, so that, that I could at least uh, get some numbers on a common use target. Um, in my measurements, uh, the performance improvement was between 1 and 2%, relatively consistently. That's not nothing, but also not very much. I wanted to say, uh, I think there's a fundamental question whether this feature is still relevant nowadays. I mean, back like in the 1980s, 1990s, level, every CPU cycle was precious, so I presume the, the disabled gas preprocessing mode was invented just to make, obviously, the compilation and the assembly state compilation go faster on whatever slow hardware was back then, and nowadays, you say two percent, yes, but giving like like what the, the Linux kernel compiles in I don't remember forty seconds or so. Well, I mean, I remember times when you talk about the GCC. That, uh, that that's taken four or five hours on our books. Maybe the body slowed down. So that's not not the recompilation has to run. Uh, well, okay, yes, the uh, recompilation that we can solve the problem of building and testing. Yeah. Right. And if you say 2% of the time to build and test... Yeah, and, and uh, no, 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 we're talking about the same assembly time. Oh, uh, just the assembly time? Yeah, that's oh. not the compiler. So, so yeah, it's, it's the compiler which takes all the time. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> True. Also. S still, uh, I, would, uh, I certainly agree with your argument as one against considering the pre of the Yet I think nowadays, it is maybe less performance as such that we should be concerned about, but saving the power. Even there, it may matter if we say a sample too. It's probably not so much the time that it takes to get a result when things are fast anyway. The, the general thing nowadays is that the machine time is essentially cheap and the developer's time is expensive. Yes. So, I mean, if you're willing to invest your time in I mean, making this, this, this uh, feature perfect. From what I'm saying, there cannot be very much that is missing. But the problem is to figure out what it is that is missing. Because otherwise it is a relatively simple change on the compiler side to actually make things work again. I um, because you say you will make it work for the you say this is uh, I guess. And how how yeah, much yeah, yeah, yeah. how much work was it with it, it, it's a relatively simple change to get white space processing correct uh, in gas for X86. And and uh, that's all I need. I mean uh, I don't need to tweak the compiler, I don't want to, to measure okay. because I can just use the command line option. And uh, that way I get the assembly numbers uh, that I'm after. So I didn't touch the compiler at all so far. For, but for the compiler, it's pretty simple. You, yeah, you just have to make sure yeah. either you pass the line option or you put the regular to the correct place. There's one mention of complication. I mean, we'll, we'll get back to the white space aspect uh, in a minute or two. But there's one additional complication. The directive is, as I said, a hash nowhere or the later hash app. But hash is not uniformly a command character. So I may 
the change from gas necessarily to actually respect command characters, and when hash is not one, that the, the compiler would then need to emit something that actually is a command character, which I think affects just a single target. But then hash also is not the line command character in certain targets, and the compiler emits the line command character at the start of the graphic. So what RPC, I think, was we get, I don't know what, what it was, slash, slash Noah, I think, which gets simply does nothing good. And is it, is it there for a long time, you said? Because, I mean, if it's emitted something that you don't need something for years, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the functionality, like I said, was there already when I started with this, yeah. uh, when I started looking at this uh, okay. 25 years ago. So, so it has been there all the time. But it never do something. And, uh, uh, and it's used for, uh, I mean, uh, uh, we really shouldn't be talking about used here, we should be talking about avoid. Yeah. Because the, the precursors are technically used everywhere except for one or two targets. Okay. Uh, someone told me just before the uh, session here, yeah, and said it would be Chris, which actually probably avoids the preprocessor. I may have sort of had a notion of some second target, similarly getting it right. But uh, the majority of the targets, and in particular the commonly used targets, uh, the widely used ones, um, apparently don't use it. No. But I said in the beginning. I'm afraid they don't use it because there were problems. And in my opinion, if the problems are sizable uh, in terms of, uh, as you say, engineering time, then I probably would prefer to solve the problems and get a feature working right. Otherwise, I would be tempted to suggest we just strip it up and accept that. And as the white case processing, I wanted to yeah, get back to that. Uh, on x86, I fixed it, and I fixed it on a couple of other targets, but there is a more general uh, consideration there towards how white space processing in principle should be working in the assembly. Because right now, it's a fair mix of at least three, maybe four different approaches. The risk use of the liability uh, construct is space, which which covers uh, also things like uh, new lines and uh, vertical tabs and whatever. There is practically no use of the liability construct. Construct is blank, which in my opinion would already be better suited for the assembler. But then there is the question whether, like for example, symbol characters, we shouldn't, in principle, better allow the target to control what is a white space character. So that for specific operating systems, for example, people could choose that the vertical tab is or is not the white space character. Should it be that host rather than target? Yes. No, I think uh, uh, I think I'd rather rather call this a target aspect, not a host host aspect. But I agree, one can be of different opinion there. I mean, if you're editing Linux code on an CDIC system, the IBM card encoding, then it's sort of like you know, it is going to be interesting. It's, it's the host character set on the, the card targeting one. I, I'm not sure about this, actually. No, I think yeah. it seems. But, but, but yes. In any event, the question is not so much who controls it, target, host, build, or whatever. The question is should it be controllable at all? Or should we rely on what library, rely on what library provides? Because the, the current mix is the worst of all situations, in my opinion. Because you can't really predict in the various different places, what is going to be white space if the white space checking isn't correct, uh, isn't consistent. So, so um, depending on whether we want to allow control, I would want to move to either a gas-specific construct 
like we have this new line, also have this white face. That is something that I started working on until I realized that I might be moving in the wrong direction. And so knowing that I'd be here, I rather thought uh, I postpone the work a little and so get some further opinions here. So one way, like we can override what simple characters and what new line characters are, we might allow overriding of what white space characters are. The other approaches simply use this blank. The question is whether or not how or someone is here. Yes. Well, that is something that is blank, at the very least, is supposed to be abstracting again. Okay. The other thing is everything that is not ASCII in assembly code needs to be coded anyway. And within codes, white space doesn't matter. For, for the purpose of parsing, I mean, it matters in other regards. So, so for the purpose of parsing, once we see a double code, we move on until we find a closer one. Can you have a situation where you have a character in a simple name that is valid, but it's not valid outside the simple name? It looks like white space outside the simple name. Something like a, I don't know, a Unicode space, for example, which might be a valid character for a simple name. Yeah, a that's right. So the point White space is something, is it context dependent? Um, yeah, in a way, I mean, uh, the example doesn't do proper to the message, but um, when you have something that is valid in a simple name, it can at the same time be white space. So uh, the, the situation you talk about, let's take the non-breaking space, that, that is not representable of Aston. That cannot cover the symbol name, of course. But then, for one, the assembler has a mode in which it warns anyway about uh, multiple characters. The, the one is off by default, by the aid. But then such characters will be uniformly recognized as non-white space. Because the white space handling, no, no matter which way we do it in the current infrastructure, no matter whether we, whether we use this blank from the library, or is white space as a special assembly construct, it always only looks at a single character. And the single character is the child. <laughs> Not, not anything that is capable of representing the UTF or well, UCS, yeah. whatever. So, blanks in that sense will presently always be simple characters. And never, will, never be white space. Which probably is all wrong too, but uh, that, that's a separate issue too. So, are there opinions towards library versus assembler specific? I would go with assembler specific because okay. you always have the option of changing it. So that is a nice thing as well. Just get folks with library if you need to. Okay, yeah. And in that case, I would say if the two of us agree, then I'll go back up. <laughs> Yeah, beyond that, I, I think that's going to be a short session because, yes. uh, unfortunately, uh, the main purpose could not really be reached. I think you talk to you a couple of ways. Have a this to GCC, say, to the back end of the tent, say, look, yeah. guys, why don't you do this? No, at least for uh, targets that I'm reasonably familiar with, yes. I, I'm probably going to do that and see what the reaction is. Mm -hmm. Of course, that means I first need to put the assembler into proper shape for it to actually work. So one question is, what happens if a compiler supplies supposed to read correctly formatted code, which our colleague isn't what we just expect in the non-preprocessing model? I mean, most of white space processing in GAS consists of looking at the single character, not the sequence of characters. So if there, was multiple, if there was multiple white space characters, then the typical result would be that Gus would say unexpected character. 
Yeah, so on the second place. Second place. Yeah. Second place. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's yes. easier to track. It, it, it will be on the second place. My main concern as, as being a GCC developer as well is that essentially the output from GCC typically comes from uh, machine, machine description mm -hmm. parts. And the quality of the patterns embedded there varies. Right. Yes. I, mean, I, I mean, you know, people sometimes are not aware that they, that they, that they are uh, specific escape sequences to produce specific part mm -hmm. of output, and instead they just like put space characters, uh, art characters, or whatever they they see yeah. fit, and. Uh, the result of this device, and it may be that, like, you have this issue in a, just a couple of corner case uh, machine patterns which are hardly ever used, so you end up with, you know, a compiler that seems to work most of the time, mm -hmm. only for some of the corner cases, it's great because it doesn't follow the, the, the formatting rules and does right. expect. So. so it may be a bit of a challenge to actually uh, audit all the machine description files, or even within a single target, and and make sure that things are in shape. Yeah, I mean, uh, my general approach would be to first see how well the test suite does for the target. That, that will typically, because I'm relatively convinced that all the bound-formed constructs would be flagged by the, by the assembler. So all, all respected, te respected test cases will fail. And something, yeah, that's it. But this relies on the specific instruction patterns that are going to produce in yeah. whatever yeah. test suite it is. And, and then it may not happen because they are like specific to a, um, you know, an odd kind of a CPU, you know, and very far recent ones. Mm -hmm. That and then, you know, yeah. two years old, the, the whatever done stream user base upgrades their compiler or the server. And they, they, then yeah. they, you know, uh, screen the, the, the two changes in broken. Yeah, w which is why my uh, vaguely planned approach would include at, at least a vague audit of the MD files in, uh, uh, in the compiler. But they, uh, especially on x86, they're huge. Um, so a reasonable, a reasonably complete audit is uh, pretty much on the scope. And, and to have a way to disable the compiler actually inserting the granted. So that people who run into problems because of bad machine description entries have a way of getting their code to compile despite possible problems that will be fixing separately. Otherwise, it, it'll be a constant back and forth between trying to enable it and uh, having too many regressions and needing to disable it again. Yeah. Yeah, would it be possible to have a warning option in GAS that would actually not mm -hmm. cause an assembly failure, but just to, 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 to indicate that that's right. been uh, an okay. issue? That, that's prohibited uh, with how, how things work. I think you go through and pre-process how you don't. Because otherwise, if you wanted to warn and then continue, because the warning alone would be okay, but the continuation after I mean, I mean, this would make what, what, what we would need to do in that situation is recognize that this is a problem which occurs just because of the preprocessor not having been run, enable the preprocessor, and start again. So I mean, it's, it's it can be a bit. It's really cool to, to, to track all the, the issues done because you can't just recompile all the stuff you want and then have a look through the logs to see or any occurrences yeah. of, of issues here. You just have to go one by one and automatically. And I mean, the farther you go into the compilation, the more yeah, I mean, take to, to reach the, the, the. I would the say, of, you know, if in a specific backend, you hit the fourth or fifth problem. You just turn it off until some of the target maintainers actually clean up their well, change I the target maintainers. <laughs> but but uh, <laughs> until you know there are many problems, I, I think it would be fair to at least give them a chance. I also want something. Uh, I think we try to be quite compatible with other assembler on my own system. I mean, 
we have some instruction, like we say, some assembler parameters or some whatever, accept this thing, do so we do the same. Uh, are we the same kind of problem here, where an external, another assembler will accept for example, for white space at some point, and activating the preprocessor will make this over fine crash or whatever. Okay. The answer is yes in both. Yeah. <laughs> if, yes. if, if, if there is a proper specification on the yes. assembler, then obviously you have to follow that. So yeah. If the says that white for the seven said that the white space is allowed here and these are the yeah. valid ones, then you have to. Yeah. If you're just being compatible with a, another company's commercial compiler, yeah. that's the assembler, um, you might want to do that for if you're working for a company that pays you to do that kind of thing and, mm. and will keep customers happy. But the main purpose for the GNU assembler is to support the GNU compiler. No. Oh, and as long as that carries on. Okay. Then, oh, well, thank you. Yeah, so in that sense, probably the main concern that would remain is that of uh, dealing with inline assembly, that like the client might accept and yeah. guests might not. But it's typically the other way around. So so far, I've only ever seen cases where Clown stumbles over things where Gus is fine. Yeah, from my experience, the assembly language for some targets has been grossly underspecified. There's a yes, so not, absolutely. Not assembly language mm -hmm. where all the people keep referring to the how many, many targets, targets has no specification at all. But many targets, the new assembly is the specification. Exactly. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> And that, and that, and that I mean, even on x86, where part of the predominantly used dialect is not actually the one that the vendor specified. Mm -hmm. That one has a specification which is like 20 years old, I think, and was never updated, and so does not really serve as a reference anymore either. It can address very basic. Uh, Disagreements between uh, typically H, J, and E, but um, in the common case, uh, you can only try to apply common sense in order to figure out what they would have meant for the new situation. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm struggling a lot with MRI code in uh, gas. <laughs> yes, that must also not have been well specified anywhere. I'd love to know if anyone was actually using it or if you could just rip it out. It is a I think there are users of it. At least there are a few test cases. That's already better than some of the other things. Well, okay, thank you very much then. Oh, that's easy. <laughs>